where I'm at. Anyway, um, what else has been happening to me? Oh, I went to see Travis Scott in O2. That was flipping awesome. Um, that was a great show. Um, an awesome show in the O2. Travis Scott absolutely smashed it to pieces. I think that's fair to say. Um, again, weird show, man. Weird show because um, I saw him at the O2. I saw him at the Brixton Academy, right? Back in the day. Uh, not back in the day. A few months ago. A few months ago. A few months ago. Last year. Yeah. Um, one of my own day. And it was fucking awesome. It was really, really good. Um, but it was a small arena. He was a really tight 40-minute set. He sort of played it like a punk rock band, right? Just came in and just blitzed through all the hits mosh pit people you know they had to call an ambulance i think some dude broke his arm it was insane right and i was in the flipping i was in the seats as well and we were going crazy it was awesome really really cool fest really, really cool concert sorry so that wasn't sure what to expect that o2 right like sold out crowd the o2 i've seen future there i've seen drake there um so it was kind of you know he had a a, a high barrier a high kind of thing to kind of meet and wow man it's safe to say travis scott met that and probably leaped frog it right i think he might be my favorite performance of the lot um insanely good stage design was awesome they had like a massive carousel thing on the main stage and then in the middle they had this weird square that he kind of popped in and out of it kind of reminded me of wrestling you know back in the day wrestling when the, the stadium would go dark and then suddenly the guy would pop in the middle of the ring that's what it kind of reminded me of when we went to see travis and then he'd do it kind of keep going back and forth back and forth and it was just insane how good he is live though like, again, no backing track, just him straight vocals, blaring out the hits, everyone losing their minds. It was so good. So, so good. Um, the crowd was pretty adolescent. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of kids there. Um, made, made me feel super old and stuff. But overall, a really good crowd. Um, I think the O2 stewards do a good job of keeping everyone kind of in check. They had this weird thing where they made sure all the edges were free so people couldn't, you know, stand the edges. And they had like a, a little ring of safety around everyone that was quite nice and quite welcomed. Um, yeah, and in general... Just a really organized, really, really good organized festival. Let me see if I can get a video up from O2. I think, yeah, easily one of my favorites. Um, and again, Travis is, it's weird because you don't really, um, you forget how good people are live, right? Um, when they perform. Like you forget how, pe how good people are, especially when, when you don't listen to them for a while. Because usually when it comes to festival, when it comes to concerts, I tend to not listen to the artists on this. I'm going to go watch. I kind of stay, you know, stay away. I want to kind of build anticipation. So I don't really know what to expect. I hadn't, I hadn't seen anything, right? And and these days I have not been on social media too too often, right? I've been kind of um, ghost from that stuff. So I didn't, I had literally no idea what to expect. So when we got there, it was an absolute pleasure. And I think this is a video now, right? That, that someone recorded. I'm going to lower the volume a little bit. This is from like the rafters bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is like the, this is like from the, the right hand side. I was somewhere down here right towards the edge of the day with my friend it was fucking awesome and yeah two massive screens a massive sort of castle thing a teddy bear there and in the middle kind of thing there in the middle too it was an insanely good set man he smashed it see so, that, so that's a ring there that's the little ring so he kept popping up between there and and the main stage it was fucking cool man like we got to see him up close and he went back there running back and running back and forth like it was so good honestly it was so good i can't i can't underestimate how good it was the mosh pit was insane as well. Just a really good um, concert overall. I skipped through some bits now. But yeah, just really cool, man. Look at it. He fucking smashed it. I was really a big fan of it. Again, Travis Scott, one of my favorites um, so far live. And again, I think it's real good because nowadays, especially with the influx of festivals, especially with the influx of fans in terms of uh, hip hop music in general, there really needs to be a level up, a step up. People, artists need to take a, a step up and really bring a performance, really bring something special when it comes to a live show. Because again, I think I mentioned this earlier to my friend, like I'm in a space now where I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of kind of reconsidering how I spend my money, my, my spending habits and stuff when it comes to recreational activities. And I've made it known here that I'm a big fan of nightlife. I love going out. I love having a good time. I love kind of, you know, getting reckless, getting loose and stuff. But I've also started to realize that I also like um, getting reckless and getting loose when it comes to things that are special, right? I don't want to just do it every weekend for the non nonsense things. So I was thinking that maybe going forward, I might start give, making myself a little monzo, make myself a little pot of monzo where I kind of put aside 50 quid every time I get paid or a hundred pound, whatever it may be, that will go towards like any kind of last minute concert or gigs. Because usually I don't show about you guys, but I find it quite difficult to keep on top of gigs and where to go and, you know, remembering who's playing and where to go see them and stuff. So I, so I use stuff like Song Kick that works really well, right? In terms of seeing people, but sometimes you can lose track of it, right? So when stuff pops up last minute, 
and your friend's like, oh, let's go to this place, and it's like ninety pounds. You're like, oh man, that's my whole money for the week, isn't it? So you're like a bit, you're a bit tight for cash. You're like, I'm not going to get paid until the end of the month, so it's a bit, it's a bit hard. So what I'm thinking now going forward is I'm going to just make a pot, put some money aside every month, and then just have that for all my kind of concert gig stuff. And then what I'll do is that I'll kind of cut out the kind of miscellaneous random nights out in Hackneywick unless it's going to see obviously unless i'm going to go see somebody really awesome right cut out seeing like all the random kind of djs i like to go see because you know i like to go see djs because i want to see how the best people are playing but cut that stuff out and kind of invest more money into seeing kind of the top tier people so if i want to go see ricardo villalobos martinez brothers macio plex dixon um, um people from kind of music the public possession boys whatever it may be right i can go do that nina kravitz blah, blah, blah. that's cool but it's that because I remember, you know, the, the the thing that I went to go see at Wallstone Assembly with Nina Kravitz was insane, right? And I paid twenty five quid for that, um, the Crank Brothers Festival sort of thing. But that's an experience, right? I'd rather go do that than go see a random person. I don't know a fold, right? Um, I'd rather save the fold um, evening out for like somebody that's really special, and then that way you'll kind of have a lot more marquee moments when you look back on your year. And I think a lot of kids now are probably thinking that too because they don't, they don't have as much disposable income as I do, right? The older you are, the more money you make. It's not because I'm good at anything that I do, really, for the most part, but it's because, you know, by proxy of being older, you get to earn more money. So I guess if you're a kid, you probably don't have that much money to spend. You want to make it worthwhile, right? So you don't want to waste your money to a club night. You'd rather spend, you'd rather save that £80, £90, £100. Go see Travis Scott, one of your favourite artists, the guy, you know, because I remember, I remember when, what I was like when I was a kid. I used to always play the same stuff all the time on my headphones, right? I never used, on my iPod, sorry. I had the same people playing again and again and again. I didn't really have a much variety. I had a lot, don't get me wrong, I had a lot of variety in terms of genres I'd listen to on my iPod, but what I listened to day to day really was the same five, four people, right? So it'll be, it's probably different from when I am now, right? Where I kind of listen to loads of albums back to back. So I'm DJing a lot, so I have to kind of keep myself abreast with music, but. If you're a kid now, you know what I mean, you just you're just obsessed with one or two artists, right? Nav, Playboy Carti, Rocky, Travis, Tyler. There's people that you're just obsessed with and you just want to hear them only, post Malone. So it makes more sense to just save your money, wait to see them come, and then kind of like have an hour of like spending time together with people that all are you know, that's the beauty as well when you walk into a place like the O2 Arena. It's so fucking gargantuan. And you look around, you're like, fuck, we all share this common interest. I don't know, it it always kind of gets me like Goosebumpy, I was like, shit, this is awesome, isn't it? We all share a common interest in where we love this one particular artist. It's one thing we all share in common. Different colours, creed, sexuality, religious beliefs, like, you know, um, socio-economical point of view, whatever it may be. Like, we're all so different. We all come from different walks of life, but we're united on this umbrella of kind of getting, you know, of raging out uh, when Travis comes to perform. Really, really cool, man. And again, oh, the merch was really awesome too. My friend bought a couple of stuff there as well. Everyone was really happy with the merch. I love the little brown hat that they had. I thought that was really nice, but you know, it was 40 quid, so that might be a pass in that regard. And you know what? Maybe I'm a bit too old to wear hip hop merch, but in general, great show. 10 out of 10. Um, Travis absolutely smashed it, and I'll be more than happy to pay the same, if not more, to see him again. I think at the end, I was kind of discussing with my friends, you know, whether or not it was a bit more, is a bit expensive paying 80 pounds plus to see Travis Scott, but I think. You know, considering it's an artist I listen to a lot, considering I know most of his digest- discography, considering someone that I followed since Al Faro, even before that, considering somebody who, again, doesn't perform, doesn't um, go halfway with performances, he's going to bring the fucking noise, he's going to bring the madness, you know that, right? He's, he's, he's aiming to be kind of world class. Um, you know you're going to get a real, real show. You're not just going to get, like, you know, uh, a, a table with some tablecloth on it and someone playing, you know, Serato and just pressing pause and play and stuff you know it's going to be an actual real show so that was really cool and again really really enjoyed it um big up everyone that was there had a lot of good fun loads of nice times there um and again minimal minimal social media use i think i uploaded a couple of videos that you know weren't really of good quality but yeah minimal social media use just went there had a good time raged out and went back home um but yeah good time good time good good time